and helps to reveal third-party exclusive videos. EA has laid off 200 testers. Nintendo won't change when Miyamoto leaves, and Yuji Naka admits guilt. Extra, extra, hear all about it! to the podcast that doesn't sleep on the job. I'm Matthew, and joining me is the Dean of Games, the Dean Slater on all platforms. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I've been busy this week. Oh yeah? What have you been doing? Uh, let's see. When? Tuesday? Tuesday, I uh, posted nine videos. Well, that's a lot. And from Twitch's graveyard, we have Gavin. Hola. How have you been doing? I'm tired. Yeah? Yeah. That's exciting. Anyway, this is Extra Extra, your weekly gaming news podcast covering the news leading up to Sunday, March 5th, 2023. And if you like us, you can go to patreon.com slash the briefing room. Let's get to some news. As tired as we are about these stories, let's not bury the lead. PlayStation has to reveal their third party exclusivity deals. This comes from the FTC lawsuit against the Microsoft Activision merger. Uh, Sony was subpoenaed in January, and the subpoena included 45 separate requests for documents. Sony argued that the requests were irrelevant or too time-consuming and expensive to carry out and should be quashed or limited. The judge mostly disagreed. Uh, One request was that Sony produce a copy of every content license agreement with a third party since 2012. The FTC agreed with Microsoft that that since much of the case revolves around the negative impact in competition, that a look uh, should be made at how Sony's uh, deals impact competition. The FTC, however, did agreed to limit the range from 2019 to present. Though not agreed to yet, Microsoft has offered a 10-year contract for Call of Duty to be released on the PlayStation. People that wrote about this story are Chris Scullion at VGC, Cameron Cook at GameSpot, James Bachelor at GameIndustry.biz, and Luke Plunkett at Kotaku. How do you guys feel about this? Well, it's kind of a, just exciting that uh, that we're going to kind of get a, a behind-the-curtain look at uh, some of these deals. And honestly, if it's too present, we might end up finding out about some games that have not been announced yet. Um, uh, depending on, obviously, uh, how much um, is agreed to be uh, redacted. Um, you can never rule out redactions, but, uh, I mean, that, again, like the judge, the judge agreed to, uh, with Microsoft that, you know, that look into, uh, how the competition works would be interesting. And I'm certainly interested because for all the, uh, poo-poo Sony's been making about this merger, Sony has made so many exclusivity deals. I mean, even after Microsoft bought Bethesda, there was still a couple Bethesda games that came out exclusively on PlayStation because of exclusivity deals from them. You look at Square Enix, how many times have we seen a Square Enix game? Uh, PlayStation only. 
Um, there's just a lot that goes into this, and I'm just excited to see what happens there. Obviously, I would love for this just to be over with already. Um, it was, what, G around January 21st, when the, somewhere around there when this was announced. It's, it's been a long, a long process, so. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Gavin? I don't know anything about any of this, honestly. Like, I don't pay attention to the le legal bullshit of game companies because I just don't care. Yeah. I mean, the uh, Activision Blizzard thing we've been talking about for, like I said, two years. It's been a big thing. The second, the second episode of the podcast... Uh, was the first time we covered the story because the story broke between our first and second episode. Yeah. That's why I can't... Like, but, like, but, like, at the same time, when it comes to big company console bullshit, I, I, in my opinion, they're all a bunch of bullshitters, and I don't oh. fucking care what they do. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But... I was like, one can go down, one can rise up. I, I don't fucking care. As long as I keep on getting games and games keep on being good, I don't care yeah. what they do. That's all between them. No, I, I agree with that, but I do think it's exciting to see the behind the scenes. Uh, speaking of behind the scenes, I have been uh, something I meant to mention uh, last week that I forgot to. I've been watching that uh, the Psychodacy uh, docu series, and I finally finished it. But man, that was a that was a crazy ride. So it was uh, it's on all on YouTube, and it is thirty two parts in like in like forty five hours, something like that, forty five fifty hours, and it is just uh the story of the making of psychonauts 2 which uh fans of the podcast might remember that was my uh game of the year for 2021 um so yeah that's uh it's exciting um it was a great documentary and i, I love behind the scenes things that's one thing that I really miss about uh, DVDs is the uh, commentary. I I would always listen to the commentary of every DVD we got, even if it was a movie I didn't really like, just because I loved hearing the behind the scenes stuff about it. Um, yeah. And so I am excited to see what some of these numbers look like, how much is being. Um, uh, how much is being paid to some of these companies for these exclusive deals? Well, out of the blue, a uh, story happened this week, and that is EA has laid off over 200 testers. This is according to three Kotaku sources. Um, and the affected, given the news, uh, be a mandatory Zoom meeting at 8 a.m. It was not scheduled either. Like, they were just told, hey, you're you're going to this meeting at 8 a.m. And uh, that's when they were told they don't have a job anymore. Uh, most are from the Apex Legends team. Uh, they get 60 days of severance, though most of their contracts were longer than 60 days. Uh, they could only collect their belongings under the watch of security. This comes after Battlefield Mobile and an alleged Titanfall game were canceled, as well as Apex Mobile being shut down. Apex Legends started Season 16 on February 14th. People who wrote about this story is Tom, Tom Ivan at VGC, Michael Brandon Ingram at Game Rant, Ethan Gatch at Kotaku, and Claire Lewis at GameSpot. Oh, I'm tired of all these layoffs. Oh. I'll add to that they were also told they had to train their replacements. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, one of the guys realized that's, that, that's what they were doing because they were helping some other QA testers in Europe. Mm -hmm. And so when they were let go, he's like, oh, that's why we were helping them out. Yeah, they were training their replacements in the UK and India. Yeah. Because it's oh because because the dollar there goes way farther than the dollar here. So mm -hmm. yeah. Which is just a shitty thing to do. It's so yeah. weird too that that's all happened because like all the shit that Apex has got gold for right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like this is the biggest season they've had ever. Like, they reach yeah. an all-time peak this season, alone with all the changes and stuff, and then they fired all, like, almost all their QA testers. Yeah. Which made no sense. Yeah, it is... You know, EA has, over the last, I'd say, three or four years, really, uh... Um really fixed some of their reputation as well as, you know, some other companies helping by destroying their reputation. So EA looked even better, but man, this is classic EA shittiness. Um, when it comes to Apex, I guess we'll just see what happens. Yeah. I will say silver lining. If there was no choice, but for it to happen, it's better. It happened now than later because given all the changes and such that have come to Apex currently has brought the yeah. game back to life. So if there's ever a, a time for them to do something that's going to fuck the game up, might as well do it when it's at its peak. See, for me... And not, I and not when it's at its, you know, lowest. Because if they did this when it was at its lowest point, it would have just gotten even worse and the game would probably would have fucking died out. But yeah. if they're doing it at its peak, the game's at its peak, now they're going to fuck it up some. Yeah, see, for me, but there's no knowing, knowing the his Knowing the history of Apex, it's not going to be as bad as its lowest point. Yeah. So there's at least that. Oh, no, there's no excuse, for sure. I'm just saying, if there was no if there was absolutely no fucking choice but this had to happen, which there's always a fucking choice. I'm I'm saying, hypothetically, if this was the yeah. only option, this would have been the time to do it. Yeah. I I still think about uh, my uh my dad does uh services on you know uh for like uh equipment like various types of equipment but uh he had one customer or well, he had two these two customers uh, nearby. One was uh you know, during the pandemic, one decided to lay off their entire team because he couldn't afford to pay them during shutdown and he had no choice to shut it down because they weren't essential. And the other guy's like, listen, it's going to be a little rough for me, but I'll pay you guys throughout the pandemic uh, however long it, we have to have be closed. It's going to be a little rough for me and, you know, when we come back, probably a little rough for you guys too when you come back, but... I'm going to do my best to take care of you. Well, when uh, the lockdowns all ended and everything, the customer that had laid off a bunch of people couldn't hire anybody back. Everyone had already found another job or just flat out didn't want to return because of the way they were treated there. As far as, you know, at the worst possible time being let go. The guy that yeah. paid, his team worked harder than they had ever worked before right um and it goes to show you take care of your people your business does good yeah i wish and so the, i wish our i wish our job would figure that out <laughs> um i just man the i i just i don't understand how you get to the point where you have to lay people off yes there's a downturn but it's not like this downturn, like this recession, depression, whatever you want to call it. It's not like this was a secret. Everyone saw this coming, you know, a year and a half, two years ago. We knew this was going to happen. So why do you have to lay off people? Why couldn't it have been, oh, 
hey, we're not going to hire people as people leave, you know, which is also kind of shitty, but, like, you know, at least then you're not laying people off. Well, and then you've got all of these companies that have laid people off. Their CEOs are making thousands of dollars compared to their one dollar. Just yeah. fuck capitalism, dude. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, from one corporation to another. Uh, Matthew, whenever you're ready. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Nintendo won't change when Miyamoto leaves. This is from an NPR interview. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Shigeru Miyamoto is the creator of Super Mario, Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong, Star Fox, F-Zero, and Pikmin. And in this interview, he said it's probably going to be the same. There's, you know, people on the executive team, creators within the company, and also people who create Mario. They all have the sense of what it means to be Nintendo. Uh, Miyamoto has been working on multiple projects, including Universal Park's Super Mario World, co-producing the Super Mario Brothers movie, and his pet project Pikmin 4. People who wrote about this story are Andy Robinson at VGC, Ethan Gatch at Kotaku, and Andrea Sheeran at IGN. I mean, uh, this is not a surprise, and as far as how games are made with Nintendo, that's not the part that people are wanting to change anyway, is the games themselves. Some of the outside stuff that Miyamoto has nothing to do with um, is where a lot of people have problems with it. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. They they know what makes their games popular. They don't need Mimo to tell them what makes their games popular. They're well aware. Uh, Kit and Chris have constantly talked about on their podcast uh, a bunch of Nintendoisms of like phrases that would always be passed around in the offices. So not a surprise whatsoever. Um, I just wish they'd change a little bit more of how they treat their fan, you know, their, you know, their consumers and everything. But all right. Uh, Matthew, go ahead and jump on the next one. To another, Yuji Naka admits guilt. Uh, he is obviously the creator of Sonic. He was arrested in November, accused of buying 10,000 shares of aiming stock after hearing that they were working on a Dragon Quest mobile game while he worked at Dragon Quest owner Square Enix to sell after the announcement. He was then arrested again in December, accused of the same thing, but this time with Final Fantasy VII, the first soldier developed by A-Team Entertainment. Uh, allegedly bought 130 shares worth about 146 U.S. dollars upon the resale of them. And here's what he had to say about it. There is no doubt that I found out about the games before they were made public and bought shares in them. Uh, people who wrote about this is Chris Scullion at BGC, Tom Phillips at Eurogamer, Stephen T. Wright at GameSpot, Isaiah Colbert at Kotaku. Tom, it, he pro listen, he probably did it, regardless of, you know, what I'm about to say. More than likely, he did it. There's a whole paper trail you can follow. But I will say, as far as him, quote, admitting guilt, gotta remember, uh, in Japan... Uh, they have a 99% conviction rate. Uh, whether he did it or not, he more than likely would have been found guilty. Now, again, probably did it. But, uh, him admitting it is more probably for leniency than anything else. 
because he more than likely would have been convicted regardless. Um, it just kind of sucks, you know, saying uh, a, a gaming legend, as you mentioned, Matthew, uh, in your transition. Um, it just kind of sucks seeing a gaming legend really fall from grace. I mean, he created Sonic the Hedgehog, who admittedly is one of the most recognizable characters in all of gaming. I would say it goes Mario 1 and then Sonic 2. Um, they, and then, you know, had pretty long career with Sonic, went to Square Enix, you know, to make his own, his, a new platforming game because, uh, he had a falling out with Sega. Went, made us a new platforming IP, and that was Ballin' Wonder World? Wonderland? I don't remember which, what it's called, but Ball and Wonder uh, World or Land, and it was just not good. Uh, there was literally one power. Like, you know, you'd think power-ups would give you power, right? There was one power-up that just changed you into a box, and you couldn't jump as a box, uh, from what I remember. Uh, I mean, admittedly, the game came out several years ago, so I could be misremembering that, but no one really liked the power-ups. It was a little slow and clunky. Um, it, it, I will admit, it had an interesting art style, but the the character over itself is kind of boring looking. Um, and like I said, slow, clunky, and not great power-ups. Um, and then, turns out, he had actually been fired by Square Enix six months prior to the game's release, um, and said, and you know, then, you know, went on this whole rant about how, uh, the game that was released wasn't the game he made, even though you can't just change a game overnight. Uh, again, watch the Psychodacy docuseries on YouTube. Uh, phenomenal. But that, you know, Psychonauts 2, also a 3D platforming game, uh, that took five years to make? Like, yeah, they started in 2016 and it released in 2021. Yeah, it took five years to make. It, it's a, They did not change the whole game in six months, um, regardless of whether it was fired before release or not. They did not change that much about the game. Um, and then, you know, they after he went on his rant, they're like, oh, yeah, uh, he was not making the progress that we needed him to make, um, blah, blah, blah. It was a whole back and forth. And then turns out he was, you know, Instead of working on the game, he was insider trading, and it's just, man, seeing the the you know the fall from grace, just it's been so sad. <sighs> what do you think about it, Gavin? I have no thoughts on it, honestly. I I don't know anything about these things. And I just don't have any connection to these things. I just don't really have an opinion. Oh, yeah, I saw this earlier. Um, so uh, pulling, a, pulling a story real quick, since uh, we're a little, you know, a uh, little ahead far from, yeah, a little ahead of schedule. Uh, Nintendo has taken down Wii U games Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon offline for security reasons. Um, they are down for extended maintenance, and it's not clear when they'll be online again. Uh, and uh, it's because there was a um, uh, there was a thing with the servers. Uh, um, there's vulnerability within the network services in these servers, uh, where 
a hacker could hop into a match with you and then automatically have your console's information and anything on the console, like, you know, debit cards and stuff. Um, and so they're trying to fix that uh, security issue. Um, and so you won't be able to play those games. I don't know why you'd want to play a Wii U game anyway, uh, with the Switch <laughs> having most of the Wii U titles regardless, but uh, it can also be carried out on uh, the 3DS, but the 3DS has been patched uh, since. <laughs> but scary stuff. Yeah, when you hop into a, you know, a multiplayer match, you don't expect that it's going to, you know, that you're going to have your information stolen while you're playing with this person who's just playing right. to distract you. Fucking gathering people's information is, people find very creative ways of doing that. Yeah. I mean, it, Obviously, there's some information you want to protect no matter what. But I'll be honest, if you've ever, ever been online for whatever reason, if you've ever had a cell phone like I have right next to my mic, uh, your, your information's out there. People have your information. Oh, yeah. Um... It, it, it obviously, like I said, you can protect some of the more important stuff like your social security and you know, for the most part your debit card, but you know that's why, you know, as shitty as, you know, so, some of the people who made PayPal are. Um that's one of the great things about PayPal is you can pay, most websites allow you to pay through that service. So that service is the only one that knows your, you know, your debit information. And you can just pay with them and they, they'll take it out of the bank and pay this other company. And so you don't have to worry about, you know, always putting in your data and you don't know who's on their webs, lurking on their website, watching you, you know, mirroring your, you know, your inputs and everything. To get your information, it's a it's a scary world out there. Uh, you got you got to be careful with some of that stuff, but chances are it's already online, regardless. Yeah. Why can't people just get legitimate jobs? Like I I, I complain about corporate, you know, capitalist society that we live in and all that. And I stand by that, but man, why you gotta? Why do some of these people have to scam people in order to, you know, in order to make money? Just don't be a shitty person. Don't be a dick. Put that on a shirt. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Yeah. But yeah. It's, uh, man, so many of these stories, like, there's some exciting ones, but man, so many of them are downers. It's been such a downer as far as with the economy and everything. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. We're still a little uh still a little ahead, but honestly, I'm recording this uh at my bedtime, so I'll I'm probably ready to just end the podcast. So I'm sorry for the short episode, uh, but it is what it is. Take it away, Matthew. If you liked, or even if you didn't like this podcast, make sure to do all of the things, like hitting the like button and the subscribe button and the bell on, at the Exit Plays on YouTube, or giving a high rating on whatever podcast service you use so you can find like-minded people. 
Be sure to tell people about the show. Word of mouth is the best way to help us grow. And I brought it up before, but on patreon.com slash the briefing room, you can financially support the show and get cool rewards as well. That's all from us. Take care.